Oh hi, I didn't see you there. Why don't you come on in and see the workshop? Welcome to my workshop. I built this place just over four years ago now. Internally it's 4.1 meters by 2.7 meters. That's about 11 square meters. What's 11 square meters in square feet? 11 square meters equal 118.403 square feet. Since I built this shed, I've put out about 270 videos on my YouTube channel, mostly projects and mostly filmed in this workshop. And until now, I've never done a workshop tour, so it's about time I changed that, especially seeing as I'm going to be leaving this place soon and moving into a bigger workshop. I thought over here by the door would be the best place to start, and by the way, first I'll do a tour of the workshop, then I'm going to do a tour of my shed extension, and finally I'll do a tour of the garage that I rent out to store all of my wood and materials. And throughout these videos, if you see a thumbnail appear on screen like this, that means there's more information in that video, and there'll be a link to that video in the description box below. Above the door is this sign. This is one of the first things that I made after I built the workshop. On the back of the door I've got this bag where I store all of my really short offcuts of wood. These go to my friend who's got a log burner so he's always happy to receive those. Over here is my first tool wall. These are the tools that get a lot of use. I'm always grabbing these. And everything here is just hung up on screws. It's really easy just to grab them and put them back. It works well and why make things any more complicated than they need to be? Beneath the tool wall is where I used to keep my most frequently used screws and I kept them all in these business card containers. That's really handy because if you need a particular size you can just pick up the container and take it to wherever you're working. And on the other side of the door are my less frequently used screws washers, nuts, bolts, all of that sort of stuff. But I'm in the process of reorganizing all of this stuff and I'll show you that over here. I've been buying some of these Silverline plastic boxes. These are available on Amazon. I'll link to them in the description box below. Got all of my screws sorted in size order, plus dominoes, dowels, all of that kind of stuff. It's just nicer to have them in bigger boxes. And when I get to my new workshop, I expect I'll make a big rack to hold all of these. Over here is my workbench. This is where I do most of my work. I've got a video about the workbench. I've also got a video about my vice, which I picked up secondhand and restored. I also added these bench dogs into the workbench. I've got a video about this on my channel. The work surface has obviously seen better days, but it does have three or four years worth of battle scars on it now. Over here behind me is the backdrop for when I do my talking to camera bits of my videos. And I've got my one and only YouTube play button here, which I made when I hit 20,000 subscribers. Hopefully I'll be adding to the collection at some point in the future. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I've also got my uh, piece of cloth in a spray paint lid. Uh, this is soaked in oil. It's an idea I got from a Paul Sellers video. This is really useful for maintaining cast iron work tables like on my bandsaw and my drill press. It just adds a really thin coat of oil to protect the metal. You might be wondering what this weird thing above me is. This is my grey hair filter. Basically, all of a sudden I kept getting loads of comments on my video saying, why has your hair gone really grey? And it coincided with when I installed these new LED lights. So yes, I have got a lot of grey hair, thanks for pointing that out, but it's not as bad as it looks. So hopefully you can see, not such grey hair, grey hair. These silicon kitchen utensils work great for spreading glue and when the glue dries up you can just peel it off which is always quite fun. I added these metal bars in front of my window just for a bit of added security and they come in handy as somewhere to store my spring clamps too. My workbench was made up of lots of salvaged drawers. These three units came from an office clearance and this one actually came from my old kitchen. So a quick tour of the drawers. This is where I keep all of my sanding discs. In this drawer is some of my frequently used hand tools, screwdrivers, calipers, my best chisels. And this isn't the best way to store chisels in amongst each other like this, but I'll come up with some better solution at some point in the future. And then at the back we've got card scrapers. In this one I've got files and rasps and my poor quality chisels as well, which just get abused. Rotor bits, staples, brad nails. And this is my bag of rags, so I just use these for applying finishes and stuff like that. And I've got a knife block here. This one I tend to use for cutting foam. This is a carving knife. And then I've got a couple of old knives that I never really use. In here are my hand planes and spoke shaves. So I've got my record number five, Stanley number four, a Stanley block plane, which I use all of the time, and a couple of spoke shaves. This is a record A151. 
and an old spoke shave which I picked up from a car boot sale. I don't tend to use this one so much because this one is easily adjustable via these cogs so this one gets the most use. Also got an old block plane here which I don't really use anymore. Then I've got more hand tools in here, pliers, allen keys, wire cutters. Then I've got a drawer full of random metal things and drawer runners, stuff like that. This drawer is awkward to get to because of the handle of the vise above it. So I just keep instruction manuals here, which I never really look at, and elastic bands. This one is where I keep all of my sharpening stuff. So I've got my leather strop, which I reach for all of the time. I've got a Japanese water stone in there, 1,000 and 6,000 grit polishing compound and my diamond stone which is 360 and 600 grit, a honing guide which I use for my chisels and plain blades while I sharpen, and then some really old oil stones here which I don't use. And in this one is just general rubbish, this one really needs a sort out. On one side of the workbench I keep my Perspex sharpening station, I've got a video about that too, and also this uh, angle gauge thing for chisels and planes, which is really useful. I don't think I've done a video about that, but I'm pretty sure Matt Esley has one, so I'll link to that in the description box. And on the other side of the workbench, I've got some of these plywood clamping squares, which are really useful for glue ups. And some of these hand screw clamps, which I picked up when I went to Los Angeles. I store most of my wood and materials at the garage, which I'll show later in the video, but I do have some wood storage here too. I've got this shelf, which is mostly mahogany, I think, and some mahogany hat and coat stands down here too. And on the top shelf is mostly oak. In the corner here, I've got a storage bin of longish pieces of wood. Storing wood vertically like this really isn't a great idea because it tends to warp and twist a bit more when stored vertically, but lack of space. And I've got all sorts in here. I've got some sapili, small pieces like this. I tend to just tape them together and then I can use them as trimming pieces and I've got some hat and coat stand material here and here. And then over here, I think I've got some beach. I've also got some dowels at the back here. These are probably old broom handles or curtain poles or something like that. And over here, I've got lots of salvaged snooker cues, which uh, I talked about in another video. Behind that storage bin, I've got some sheet materials too. I can only really store the smallish pieces here in the workshop because again, lack of space. So the bigger sheet materials are at my garage. And down here is the stuff that I haven't really found a home for yet. So I've got some offcuts of oak worktop that were left over from the cat bed cabinets I made recently. Down here, I've got lots and lots of pine bed slats. People just seem to throw these out and put them by bins all of the time. So I just come and take them away. They're really quite useful. And then working our way around, we've got the shorter pieces of wood. Uh, I've got hardwoods on this side, softwoods on that side. These are the longer pieces, these are the shorter pieces. I know most people would probably throw away things like that, but you never know when they might come in handy and I just try to use as much as I possibly can. And this is where I keep all of my hand power tools as well. So I've got my Hitachi cordless brad nailer, Hikoki plunge router, my Tecpo paint sprayer is lurking in the darkness back there. And I've got my Hikoki random orbit sander, Draper biscuit joiner, which I hate. And then I've got my Hikoki planer, air stapler by Clark, Hikoki jigsaw, Bosch belt sander, and back there in the darkness, I've got some Hikoki LED lights as well, which come in really useful. Festool Domino DF500, Evolution electric belt file, Hikoki oscillating tool. I've got another Hitachi oscillating tool and I use this one for detail sanding. Hikoki angle grinder, Evolution heat gun. I've got my Makita cordless trim router and my Hikoki circular saw. I've also still got my Makita cordless sander, but I don't tend to use that anymore. I'm not really a big fan of that one. So above all of that stuff, I've got my sanding cabinet here. This was another project on my channel. And this is where I store my Merca D-Ross sander and my wet and dry paper and my sanding discs. Underneath that, I keep all of my half used sandpaper bits that have still got a bit of life left in them. And I've got some weights here. These are great for glue ups. Paper towels, which I keep in a plastic bag just to keep the dust off. This pile of stuff on the side is the stuff that I always have with me while I'm working. So I've got my Fisco metric only tape measure. Love how compact this thing is. My Barco carbide scraper, which just comes in handy for all sorts of stuff. My Stanley marking knife, which as you can see, 
really needs a new blade and then either a pencil or a fine nibbed pen like this one. This is my bench grinder with sanding belt. I don't use the grinding wheel too often, but I use this 400 grit sanding belt all of the time just for putting a clean sharp edge on my knife blades. I always keep a spray bottle and a bottle of water with some washing up liquid in. This is great for cleanups and I've put a hole in the lid. That way I can just squirt some out for when I need to clean up my workbench. This here is my motor source station. I've got a couple of videos about this on my channel, I think. I'm currently using the Axminster White sliding motor saw, and I really like it because it has an induction motor, so it's nice and quiet. I might be replacing this soon though with the new Hikoki sliding motor saw, but I haven't yet received that, so once I get it, I'll have a play with it and see which one I like the best. On the side of my mitre hood is my rather pathetic collection of stickers. I haven't really participated in the whole sticker swap thing before. On top of the mitre hood is where I keep my hot glue gun, impact driver, and cordless combi drills. And then I've got my Google Home for playing music while I work. Play some Neil Young. Electric pencil sharpener. And my air quality monitor. Beneath the mitre saw, I have this drawer where I keep all of my chargers. I've got my Hikoki, Makita and Ryobi chargers. Also a charger for my camera batteries. And I also keep all of my tool batteries in here too. And beneath that drawer, I've got another set of drawers salvaged from an office clearance. In this one, I've got my ratchet straps, gloves, wire wool and vacuum hose fittings. And this is where I keep most of my fabric. So you'll find things like felt and leather in here. On the other side of the mitre station, I've got this thing. This is on wheels, and I can use this when I make cuts to longer work pieces at the mitre station just to support the offcut. And it's also a place to store offcuts of sheet materials like plywood. This corner is where I store most of my clamps too. You'll see I've got a couple of long reach C clamps or G clamps, not sure what they're called. And then I've got some sash clamps over in this corner. And the reason they're in this corner is because I don't really use them much anymore. And I've got some really long sash clamps as well, which only get used occasionally when I'm clamping up something really big. And then I've got my parallel clamps. I bought these quite recently. I've used these a lot. I really like them. I've got four 800 millimeter ones, four 1300 millimeter ones. And then I've got a lonely squeeze clamp over there. Some F clamps. These are the longer F clamps. And I store these in some 100 millimeter pipe and I just attach the pipe with some hose clamps to the side of the mitre station hood. And down here, I've got a couple of aluminium bar clamps. I don't really like these things either, to be honest, they don't work very well. And then on the other side, I've got the rest of my F clamps, and these are stored in more four inch PVC pipe as well. I would say that 90% of the clamping I do is using either F clamps like these and these, or the parallel clamps. Above the clamps I have my air filtration unit. This is the Thor Filtration TF470 and this is hooked up to my Google Home as well. Turn fan on. Works really well for a shop of this size but I do need to upgrade this for my new shop because like I say it's going to be a lot bigger. This hose up here is hooked up to my compressor which is in my shed extension. I'll show you that later. And these drawers up here just store little things like handles salvaged from old furniture, stuff that I might find a use for one day. Over here is my second tool wall. I've got a wrecking bar here for dismantling pallets, uh, an ax which I picked up from a car boot sale and restored, my beam compass, I've got a video about that, an old framing square which has seen better days. I keep all of my tape up here which really isn't great. Um, I need a better solution for storing tape when I get to the new workshop. Here is my Charnwood B350 bandsaw. I've been really happy with this. I've got a couple of videos about it already on my channel, so I won't talk about it in too much detail here. The table of my bandsaw is much higher than it should be, but I quite like that in a way because it's just really easy to see where you're cutting. And the reason why it's so high up is because it's sat on this, yet another set of salvaged drawers from an office clearance. And by the way, my part-time day job is working in facilities for a large insurance company and stuff like this set of drawers which has a broken lock just gets thrown away in the skip so I often volunteer to take stuff like this home. I really like drawers for storage. In this drawer I've got some screws and bolts that I haven't yet organised and even more screws and nails 
And in here I just keep really small pieces of sheet material, offcuts. Uh, I just use these for mixing up epoxy on and things like that. Next to the bandsaw I've got my bench belt and disc sander and my pillar drill. The pillar drill is something I've wanted to upgrade for a while now. I want to get something bigger with more power, but it's not a tool that I use super frequently, so for now that can wait. Behind the drill press is where I keep all of my drill bits. I've got some large Forstner bits, some plug cutter bits, some spade bits, although I never really use those. And I've got some more Forstner bits here and some uh, step cutter bits, I think. Then I've got all of my wood drill bits and brad point bits organized in size order. These are my counter sinking bits. And I've got one hole cutter set there and another one here. Above that, I've got a couple of tenon saws, which I inherited from my grandfather, uh, some crowbars and some old band saw blades, circular saw blades and table saw blades that need sharpening. And then to the right of that is where I keep all of my finishes. So there's various oils, varnishes, paints, waxes. And then down here on the bottom shelf is where I keep my stains. Beneath the pillar drill and behind this curtain, which helps to keep the dust off, is my Electra Beckham HC260. This is a combination planer, thickness planer. This one's no longer available to buy, although you can get a very similar machine by Metabo, which is also called the HC260. With the planer, usually what I do is I push my table saw over to one side because that's on wheels. This is on wheels too, so I pull this out and I use it in this area here, but it's always really frustrating because you need a bit of in-feed space and out-feed space with a planer, and I just haven't got that here. And what's even more frustrating is trying to film it. There's just no space to set up a camera to get a good angle on this machine, so I'm really looking forward to getting to the new workshop where I can have this set up in a much better space. We're coming near to the end now, you'll be pleased to know, but this is kind of the heart of the workshop really, my table saw, the DeWalt DW745. I've talked about it in my videos before, I'm very happy with the saw, but I'm not at all happy with how noisy it is. So it is a tool I'm looking to replace, I'm still weighing up the options at this time. I made this mobile stand for it, that was another project video on my channel. Beneath the saw I've got some Hikoki sustainers, which I use when I take my tools out of the workshop, and some general junk. And then over this side, this is where I keep all of my table saw jigs. And these get really dusty in here, so I really need a better solution for this in future too. And in the drawers, I've got all of my table saw accessories, push sticks, zero insert plates, digital angle gauge, stuff like that. And in here, I've got my respirators. I've got three of these at the moment. In fact, I've got four. I've got the Trend Air Ace somewhere, which I got really frustrated with, and I can't remember what I did with that. I'm still on a quest for the perfect respirator and for some reason I keep going back to this one which is actually the one I had originally. This is called the Ellipse and the reason I like this is because it's got two fixings for the straps on each side and that just works much better than these ones that have one fixing on each side because after a while these straps start getting worn and they start perishing and it gets really awkward because they twist around and it's just really uncomfortable to wear and you, you spend five minutes trying to put it on straight. So recently I bought another one, which is this. This is the Sundstrom, um, but again, just one fixing for the strap. So I know that's going to get annoying after a while. At the moment it works fine, but I know once this strap gets old, it's just going to really annoy me. So if anyone's got any recommendations for a good quality respirator, preferably with two fixings for the straps on the side like this one, I'd love to hear it. Occasionally I get asked, is a workshop of X amount of size big enough? And unless you're Jimmy DeResta or April Wilkerson, the chances are you'll never be happy and you'll always want more workspace. But it's important to appreciate what you've got and make the most of it. And any workspace is better than no workspace at all. I'm generally quite happy with what I've managed to achieve in a workshop of this size, but I've also found it extremely frustrating not being able to move without knocking things over, having to work outside on bigger projects when it starts raining, and of course filming everything makes that even more challenging. So the time has come to move into a bigger workshop and I hope you'll tune into my future videos about that. But I will be a little bit sad to leave this place. Anyway, if you want to find out more about my new space, you can check out my recent vlog where I've talked about it there a bit already. This video is already getting quite long, so I am going to split this into two videos. I'll follow this up with a tour of the shed extension, where I'll be talking about the dust extraction system that I installed about a year and a half ago. 
because there are lots of things that worked well and some that didn't work well so hopefully that will be helpful to some of you. I'll also show you my garage where I store materials in that video too. Thanks for joining me on this, my first ever workshop tour. I hope it was useful and interesting. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. You can also support the channel on Patreon if you'd like to receive early access to my videos, project plans and cut lists, exclusive content and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you.